It is a distinct pleasure and honor to be here today. Thank you so very much for letting me participate and share our story in this session. We were asked to try to relate the odyssey of taking an idea, a big idea, and transporting it into and out of the laboratory and into practical products. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Let me share my screen. Let's see, there we go. And we'll show our presentation. So we've titled this Dragon Systems from Pipe Dreams to Practical Products. When we started back in 1971, things were a whole lot different than they are today. Let me remind you what it was like out there. There were mainframe supercomputers, a fraction of the size of what's in your pocket in your smartphone. We had deck tens to work with. Um, there were a number of things that uh, were happening in 71, 72. It was a, it was a happening year. Um, the first packet switching for ARPANET, the first email, the first edition of Unix was released. And the very first microprocessor in Intel. Handheld scientific calculators were brand new, not cheap. And Atari released Pong in an arcade format. ARPA started its five-year speech understanding research project and including many contractors uh, and it ran from 71 to 76. Other events that year, the NASDAQ was established. There were anti-Vietnam War protests and marches on Washington, the manned Apollo 15 moon landing, the Watergate scandal, Bobby Fischer beats Boris Spassky in chess. The bank interest rate was 77.4%. Let's talk about what we did not have at that point, things yet to come. There were no home computers or PCs. They came in 10 years later. GUI interfaces were just being developed at Xerox PARC and commercialized a decade later. Ethernet had just been approved, the protocol for local area network communications. The internet, finally, with the ARPANET adoption of TCP IP, thank you, Vince Cerf, uh, was was, came into play. Microsoft introduced the first version of Windows. It quickly took off. Wi-Fi was introduced, the World Wide Web, the first smartphone in 94 with IBM Simon and the deep learning popularization for recognition of handwriting, speech, images, and lots of other things didn't come about in, uh, in popular usage until about the year 2000. And within a decade, the GPUs replacing the CPUs for the deep learning training algorithms came into play. We had to wait for, the, for cloud platforms. There were no clouds. And when they came about, they came about in, in uh, and were adopted very fast from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, Alibaba, Siri, the first popular general purpose voice assistant on the Apple iPhone 4S came about in 2011. And Alexa, the first popular voice assistant with a microphone array, so that you could talk to it at a distance came about with the Amazon Echo smart speaker in 2014. Dragon System was founded by Jim and myself um, in 1982. We were very, we wanted to do something um, with Dragon that we had wanted to do since we got married in 71, basically to create practical, affordable, real-time systems that you could talk to in an unrestricted fashion and get text generated immediately. So how are we going to do that? We were a very little company, but we thought that if we took small steps and staircase them with rapidly progressing uh, capabilities as we were able and able to ride the Moore's Law wave of uh, cheaper, ever cheaper uh, compute power and storage, uh, we could do that. And we wanted to make sure that the technology was user friendly uh, and have superior price performance. So. We had adopted a very different strategy than 
any of the companies we knew of. Uh, we had $30,000 in savings, and that's what we were going to use as our seed capital to start our uh, progression of products. Uh, we had no outside investors, no VCs. Uh, we decided that if we could maximize the use of um, capabilities and um, technology that we could produce a series of products that ought to pay for themselves. And that was a reality test, if you will. So they increased in vocabulary, size, and families. I mean, uh, world languages, uh, and certainly uh, English was not the only language we were aiming for from the very beginning. Um, domains, work domains, medical, legal, et cetera. We wanted to target the popular microprocessor platforms. Um, some of our initial computers that we bought to work with were, we bought at toy stores, Vic 20s and Apple IIs. The Apple II has a 6502 microprocessor at one megahertz. The Atari game machine had a two megahertz version, did not have a multiply instruction. We knew that it was important to develop application developer tools for whatever platforms we were on and APIs. We paid close attention to our competition. We were careful not to pre-announce or to overpromise. We tried to test everything pretty thoroughly and to win reviews. Our earliest users were the people who were neediest and who could most benefit from our technology. We had a number of severely and uh, disabled users, people without hands. We tried to and succeeded in putting initial products into the hands in the, and uh, use of hands eye, and eyes busy workers from factory floors to clean rooms. Um, amongst those very needy initial users were doctors uh, who needed to generate reports that could be accessed quickly. Our idea was to expand markets from early adopters to the general public as soon as we could, provide good support and make use of it for understanding it as feedback for improvements and to have fun doing it. We had a number of guidelines, some of which we started with and some of which evolved over the course of time. And although this may look like a list of platitudes in many ways, I assure you it is not. Um, we had short and long-term goals. We adapted as we needed to. Uh, speed was of the essence. Um, we tried to create a very collaborative culture with cohesive teams and to provide trustworthy role models. Again, we were looking for the sweet spot to optimize what we had to reduce friction. And when we made mistakes, as we all do, we tried to fix them quickly. Um, we tested prototypes with real users doing real work as soon as we were able to get things out of the laboratory. And we tried to meet and exceed customer expectations and market demands, uh, and again, support customers and users, and to rigorously evaluate the system performance and to stay ahead of our competition. Many of our major competitors, <clears throat> we managed to turn into customers and strategic partners, typically through their licensing our technology, which often appeared under their brand names. So the staircase of, these are uh, products that were put out, started with very small vocabularies um, and grew as uh, time progressed and our technology allowed. Um, the first um, product that included embedded speech recognition in a PC was for an apricot portable computer uh, from the UK that came out in 1984. Um, and that allowed us to do offer command control. We proceeded with larger vocabularies and less restrictive uh, uh, grammars, um, progressed to the Boy Scribe 1000 in 1986. And our aim um, was to provide at least 30,000 words. We'd started off with a goal of 10,000, but realized that Shakespeare in all of his writings used about 32,000 and thought if we could provide the uh, size vocabulary that Shakespeare used, it ought to be enough for our very articulate professional users. In 1990, we came up with Dragon Dictate 30K. It made a big splash. We also offered medical legal versions and came out with world languages. And there were special um, products as well for Dragon Teen, a Klingon language library and so forth. 
But Dragon Naturally Speaking in 1997 was true continuous speech. It did not require the pauses that we had required previously. Um, and the impact of these was pretty immediate. You can see here the list of some, a handful of the companies that made use of this, these different products and were licensed to them. Dragon Systems also took pride in contributing in many ways to the speech and natural language communities internationally. When we started, there were no um, industry standards for performance evaluation. We worked very closely with National Bureau of Standards to have everyone in the community contribute to those. So there was a common framework on which you could rigorously judge performance and evaluate it. Um, there were no publicly available large vocabulary um, text or, or language speech corpora. We were instrumental in creating the first of these, what's known as the Wall Street Journal Corpus, um, and distributed it free across all labs, um, and that has grown over the course of time. We also tried to encourage other laboratories to make available their corpora, and uh, in multiple languages and domains and so forth, we organized workshops at many of the conferences uh, held internationally to encourage people to do that. One of the things that people uh, forget these days, and uh, it is uh, nice to forget, is it used to be that if you wanted to have any kind of speech running on a PC, you needed to put in a board, a sound card, uh, something like the Sound Blaster or something like that. So we produced um, boards ourselves. We licensed our technology to other companies to do that. We also designed audio channels that were very well shielded from um, electrical noise inside computers. And we distributed those designs free of charge to all the major PC makers and anybody else who was interested so that there were, could be and there were built-in audio channels, finally, that would be acceptable for speech recognition. Um, on April 2nd of 1997, at the World Trade Center in New York City, we introduced the first general purpose, unrestricted natural language continuous speech dictation product. It had taken us 26 years. We had originally estimated it might take 25 to 40, and luckily there were big enough buffers that we were able to do it sooner rather than later. We included software, a headset, a good quality headset, microphone, documentation, as I mentioned, the active vocabulary, backup dictionary, speaker independent models that users were then asked to train to adapt to their voice. It was about half an hour. Um, we required on a Windows 95 or NT Pendium a minimum of 133 megahertz, uh, 32 megabytes of RAM, 48 megabytes for NT, 60 megabytes of hard disk space, and that industry standard 16-bit sound card. The retail price was announced at 295 and quickly went to 199 on the street. The professional versions cost up to uh, $1,695. Um, we quickly became one of the top five to 10 retail business products selling across the United States um, and garnered many awards. The world language editions, UK, English, and other kinds forms of English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, et cetera, started rolling out within a few months. So I thought you might like to see some contemporaneous examples of how it was uh, received. This is from a PBS Morning Business Report with Scott Gervey. Good morning, everybody. I'm Melissa Conti with Morning Business Report for Monday, December 22nd. Those stories and much more when we come back. Scott Gervey continues his look now at some of the hottest gifts of the season. It's not just games you know. Even if you're not in high tech, if you had a good year, treat yourself. If you've got the bucks and a powerful enough computer, there is no more satisfying gift you can buy for yourself than Dragon Naturally Speaking from Dragon Systems. This is the first really usable dictation system for the personal computer. It works. New paragraph. Um, and a couple of months after the announcement, uh, 
Here's what ABC's Peter Jennings had to say. For those of us who either cannot type or make so many mistakes with two fingers that we live by spell check in our computers. Here's ABC's Gina Smith. Computer. Talking to a computer instead of giving it commands the traditional way used to be the stuff of science fiction. Hello, computer. But no longer. Contrast bilaterally. Radiologists at this New York hospital use a state-of-the-art voice system to dictate x-ray reports to their computers. Our normal period. The bottom line is better patient care because there's faster access to the final uh, reports. The no system works well department. if you're a radiologist. We tested this for up to a year before we But announced. now there's voice recognition technology for the rest of us. Available at $299. This new software program allows you to dictate documents in a natural voice. Of six consecutive records. No typing required. It's time for the computer to work the way people work, not for people to work the way computers work. Once you've trained the system to recognize your voice, you just talk into the microphone, and the words you say appear on the screen almost instantly. If you make a mistake, you can go back to correct it. Correct that. It does require a relatively new computer. And even so, you won't want to throw out your keyboard and mouse just yet. I think for the next five years, most people entering the workforce are still going to need those basic keyboarding skills. In the meantime, instead of typing at 55 words per minute, now you can dictate to the computer at nearly three times that rate. Okay. And we got some unexpected help as, as well. Uh, this is from the ABC Tonight Show with Jay Leno and actor, well-known actor, Richard Dreyfuss. My life. Yeah. I, uh, I have learned to talk to my computer. Oh. I can talk to my computer. Now, any of you who aren't into computers, just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. But I can turn on this thing. It's called Dragon Dictate. And I can... Oh, you dictate into it. And I can dictate, and everything I say appears on the screen. And I'm telling you, it's changed my life. Because I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that can start a hundred things and finish nothing. Right. And by and I now I can wander around my so with room. this you can start a thousand things and, and not finish any of stuff. Yeah. That's the, the great thing about a computer. You can quadruple. It's fabulous. It's like all the fantasies you've ever had about computers when you were a kid. I walk around my life doing this you know, every morning. You know, as a kid, I never once had a fantasy about a computer. That's another. <laughs> so what's the other thing you do? I'm a nerd. I tell you, a, I'm a nerd. What's your other? So we'll 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 go on here. Um, as I mentioned, we were honored uh, almost immediately um, by a number of different organizations and societies and whatnot, and um, basically received top awards in most of the categories that we qualified for in the United States in Europe uh, within the first year or two. In terms of sales, we were selling primarily in the retail sector, uh, separate from the OEM um, channels. And uh, in this, these charts, these are uh, from PC data, which collected almost all the retail sales data across the United States. Um, Dragon in red, uh, dominated both in units sold and in dollar volume. Uh, our closest competitor was always IBM, uh, they're in blue, and the Belgian company Lernout and Housby in yellow. We had a number of retailers in the US and Europe uh, initially, and um, as noted by the top of the chart here and below, strategic partners who often uh, sold our products under their name. We had a number of corporate customers, um, banking, healthcare. Uh, by the year 2000, the v Veterans Administration hos hospitals in the US had adopted it across the country. Um, the Australian government was using it for court reporting. Business Week had a feature cover article about how speech technology will become ubiquitous in all of these different domains. So in the year 2000, Dragon had its main headquarters um, in Newton, Massachusetts, and five subsidiaries elsewhere uh, throughout Europe and Japan. We had grown to nearly 400 employees and uh, had ach achieved nearly $70 million in revenue. These markets were very rapidly expanded, expanding. And we knew that in order to maintain our leadership position, 
um, we needed more resources to address those market segments, especially embedded mobile devices, what you now know as smartphones and so forth. Uh, we received several offers to buy the company with the promise of major investments to expand our R&D programs up to half a billion dollars. Consequently, we knew we needed that money in order to uh, do a rapid expansion, and we entered into an all-stock merger acquisition with the Belgian-based Lernout and Housby, which had been valued up to $10 billion and was high-flying first Belgian company on the NASDAQ and so forth. However, two months after we had consummated the merger acquisition, it was discovered by two journalists at the Wall Street Journal that LNH had committed a massive international fraud over many, many years, and they suddenly declared bankruptcy in November of 2000. All of Dragon Systems assets, all of its technology, its intellectual property and products were auctioned off to pay Lernout and Housby's many creditors in the bankruptcy court in 2001. Because the Dragon Systems shareholders were now Lernout and Housby shareholders, we did not qualify for any financial recovery. Uh, our Dragon Systems primary assets were subsequently acquired by a company called ScanSoft, which later renamed itself Nuance Communication. And many of Dragon's former employees either stayed to work for ScanSoft, now Nuance, uh, and they continue to develop Dragon's technology and products and markets. Others took place at other companies that had speech groups and have made major contributions uh, to Amazon, Google, Apple, and so forth. So 50 years later, the Dragon Systems company per se is no longer here, but the Dragon Systems speech technology has been thriving and living on. Uh, the Dragon Systems-based technologies and products have continued to be successfully developed, licensed, sold to hundreds of millions of users. They feature in a lot of products and services. Uh, they are in over 75% of U.S. hospitals, from consumer items, including smartphones and virtual assistants. Um, they're the original Apple Siri speech recognition. They're embedded devices for TV remotes, for automotive GPS navigation, even dolls you can talk to. And indeed, they're in a number of PC server dictation and transcription platforms, all the way for broadcast captioning, call center, and services in a variety of standalone and cloud platform configurations. Earlier this year, Microsoft acquired Nuance Communications, including all of its Dragon Systems-based assets, products, and employees. But more, much more generally, we know that there have been recent performance breakthroughs with deep learning, with artificial neural nets, and the combination of inexpensive cloud compute power and storage, massive amounts of data, big data, speech, text corpora, the internet that gets scraped for that data, microphone arrays, application tools have all combined to make speech recognition work ever better and be more broadly utilized. Uh, corporate government and other entities now can take advantage of the speech technologies and with deep learning, some of which rival human capabilities. Today's successes reflect the hard work and ideas of many thousands of very clever, dedicated people and the funders, corporate, and especially the US government who have supported them over 50 years. We know that there are significant improvements yet to come and the applications and their spread are being made rapidly. And we hope they will continue to be made for the benefit and users of users and society worldwide. So Business Week was right. Speech technology is truly now ubiquitous. Thank you so very much.